Under motions and resolution, we'd like to recognize Senator Padilla. As we're waiting for uh, motions resolutions, members, uh, we want to go to introductions and first readings of bills. Will the secretary please read? Senate Constitutional Amendment 27 by Senator Harmon. A resolution to propose to the people of the state of California an amendment to the Constitution of the state by amending section 12 of Article 6 thereof relating to death penalty appeals. Members, we're going to go to unfinished business, items number eight. Senator Cogdell. Excuse me. Will the secretary please read, and Senator Cogdell, you may present. Senate Bill 85 by Senator Cogdell, an act relating to local government finance. Thank you, Mr. President and members. I rise today to ask for concurrence on Senate Bill 85. This bill should be familiar as the Senate approved a similar bill, SB 684, last year. As you may recall, that bill would have provided a modest amount of property tax relief to the six counties which had their property tax allocations reduced as the unintended consequence of Proposition 13. In the Assembly, the contents of SB 684 were amended into SB 85. Those amendments also provide a small amount of relief to Yolo County, which had the lowest property tax allocation of any county in the state. To protect against increased pressure on the general fund, the Assembly amendments capped the growth of the relief to the counties at the level provided in the 2013-14 uh, year. In fact, as a result of those amendments, the long-term cost of the bill is significantly less than the version previously approved by the Senate. I'm grateful for the support that this measure has received uh, last year and respectfully request your I vote. Thank you, Senator Cogdale. Members, could everyone uh, please take their seats as we uh, begin uh, today's proceedings and will the Secretary please call the roll singing? Oh, Senator Wolk, I'm sorry. Recognize at your thank desk. You. Thank you, Mr. President. Just briefly, I want to thank Senator Cogdale for carrying this bill. It uh, addresses uh, a longtime property tax allocation problem with Yolo County. I urge your support of the bill. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Senator Wolk. Members, any other comments? Seeing hearing none, Senator Cogdell would like to close. Senator Cogdell is asking for an aye vote. Will the Secretary please call the roll? Amistad? Alquist? Aye. Ashburn? Aye. Calderon? Aye. Cedillo? Cogdill, Cedillo I, Cogdill I, Corbett, I, Correa, Cox, I, Denham, I, Desanye, I, Duchenne, Dutton, I, Flores, I, Hancock, Harmon, I, Hollingsworth, I, Huff, I, Kehoe, I, Leno, I, Lou, Lowenthal, I. Maldonado. I. Negrete McLeod. I. Oropesa. I. Padilla. Papley. I. Price. Romero. I. Runner. I. Simidian. Steinberg. I. Strickland. I. Walters. I. Wiggins. I. Wolk. I. Wright. I. Wyland. I ye. Will the secretary please call the absent members? Honested? I. Correa? I. Duchenne? I. Hancock? Lou? Padilla? I. Price? Smidian? I. Ye. Mr. President, ayes 35, no zero. Ayes 35, no zero. The measure is passed. Thank you, Senator Cogdale. Senator Cogdale, you're recognized again. Thank you, Mr. President. I would ask for immediate transmittal to the governor. Without objection, immediate transmittal to the governor. Thank you, Senator Cogdale. Members, we're going to waive Senate Rule 55 to allow lobbyists on the floor for a presentation.
Any objection? Seeing and hearing none. Senator Lowenthal. For purposes of introduction. Absolutely. Uh, members. Of, members, we're moving back to privileges of the floor, and Senator Lowenthal, you're recognized. Members, starting today, over 2,500 students from all over California come to the Capitol for the annual Youth in Government, YMCA Youth in Government, and they will be here for the... Uh, Next three days, as a kickoff to youth in government members, I'm sad to say, we have a family feud between the Democrats and the Republicans. It was a great feud. Democrats surged ahead, well ahead, and then fell apart. And I would like to acknowledge by a 16 to 15 vote that the Republicans won the family feud and are now one up on us. But. Sad to say, I also say, there, there, yes, growing up in Brooklyn, Queens, I know there will be a next year. And so, and so let's all wait until next year. But I am pleased now to introduce at the back of the chamber the youth governor for the state of California, Oliver Middlestad from South Pasadena, San Marino, YMCA, and with the youth governor is the youth secretary of state, Sierra Parker from Mission Valley, San Diego. So please give a warm welcome to our youth governor and secretary of state. Senator Kehoe is recognized at her desk. Item 36. Uh, Mr. President, not to take up an item when you're ready. Okay, uh, we're, members, we're going to move to uh, item 36. Item 36. Will the secretary please read? Can't hear. Will the secretary please read? I'm going to present a bill, but the mic's not working. Yes, sir. Assembly Bill 510 by Assemblymember Skinner and Aquilina Energy. Senator Kehoe. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and members, uh, this bill, uh, AB 510, makes changes to California's net metering program by raising the existing net meter cap uh, from 2.5% to 5%. Uh, the bill has broad bipartisan support, and uh, it is uh, strongly supported by the solar industry. Uh, environmental groups like NRDC, Calif Environment California, as well as businesses uh, such as uh, uh, PG&E and Southern California Edison. Uh, members, this bill will send a clear signal that California is investing in green technology and, and jobs for Californians. I urge us to move it out today. Uh, I would ask for your I vote. Thank you, Senator Kehoe. Members, uh, Senator Wright. Well, Senator Padilla. You know, Senator Wright. I, I rise, I'm opposed. The PUC just finished a study that concluded what many of us have already said that when you do this, you effectively cost shift to people who will never be able to afford to do this. If we're simply going to say we want solar, then it ought to be the, the term of art in the business is called gen to gen. We ought not 
take all of the cost of electricity and shift it to the people who will never be able to afford it. The fact that you put a solar panel on your roof doesn't alter the fact that your meter still has to be read. So there's no relationship to the meter reader being discharged because you put a solar panel on your roof. The fact that you put a solar panel on your roof doesn't mean that you don't have to still do the maintenance of the lines. If you've been looking at some of the snow drifts and things that have been going on, you're having the utility company send out crews and pay money to fix all those lines. That doesn't absolve because of the fact that you put a solar panel on top of your roof. If we wanted to be fair, what we would do is we would say, we would compensate you for the energy that was avoided by your use of the solar panel. This doesn't do that. Members, when we enacted this statute a long time ago, and actually I wasn't in the legislature when this recent one was done, but when we first did, one of the things that I insisted was that there be no cost shifting. What has happened since then is we've gone back and we said we'll prevent a little cost shifting. And now we're going back and we're expanding the cost shifting. So what we're doing is we're taking what was done where we acknowledged before that there was a cost shift. We're going to expand the cost shift. This is Robin Hood in reverse. I would ask for a no vote. Okay. Senator Padilla. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, members, I don't rise against, uh, to speak against the content or the substance of the bill, uh, but to explain why I'm going to just stay off the bill. Uh, and it has more, much more to do with process uh, than policy. I mean, in, in, in spirit, uh, I absolutely agree with the raising of the cap to 5%. I think it's a reasonable uh, step that accommodates the growth that we are seeing on, uh, in, in the solar arena, uh, particularly in the PG&E territory. There's more rooftop solar panels going up there than I think, you know, certainly the rest of the state combined. If not, uh, uh, they represent a, a huge percentage of what's going on on a national basis. Uh, but there is a, a report, a little overdue now, uh, from the PUC uh, that is supposed to give us an assessment and an evaluation of the net energy metering program thus far. Uh, and there was questions as to why this bill should move, uh, given that it's not an urgency bill uh, and its uh, substance wouldn't take effect until January of next year prior to us uh, seeing whatever the PUC evaluation or assessment was. Uh, if it's a complimentary report, great. Even more reason to support the bill uh, and move it forward sooner rather than later. Uh, but in case the report had some recommendations or critique about how to improve the program, uh, I think from a process standpoint, it would have been better to have considered this bill uh, given that information. Uh, now there's a debate as to how quickly that report may or may not be released. Heaven forbid there's politics involved in the timing of a release of a report. That never happens around here. Uh, but we do know that the report is overdue. And so we can wait a day, we can wait a week, we can wait a month and still not know if that report will be in our hands. So uh, again, I just want to articulate, this may make a difference for you in how you vote, it may not, but why I'm at least staying off the bill has nothing to do with the substance, it does have to do with the process. So why you... Senator Strickland. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, uh, I rise in support of this uh, measure. Uh, this measure will allow us, uh, the state, to meet its goals under the California Solar Initiative. I think it's important uh, when we talk about energy, um, this will help us transform California to more renewable energy efficient economy. I think it's important um, and uh, I urge my colleagues to support this measure. Members, any more debate or discussion? Senator Leno. Thank you, Mr. President. Very briefly, I rise to stand hand in hand with my colleague, Senator Strickland, in support of this bill. This is a very modest change, a rise from 2.5 to 5. The original proposal was for 10. The governor of the state of California is on record in support of removing the cap altogether. So to raise it to 5 is very, very modest. I would ask for your I vote. Members, any more debate or discussion on this item? Seeing and hearing none. Senator Kehoe, you may close. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I appreciate the members' discussion. Thank you. And I'm relieved to see that the Leno-Strickland Alliance is holding fast. Um, let me just address the uh, urgency of this bill, it, it, not in a legislative sense, members, but in the idea that uh, technology companies are looking for a signal from California 
whether, as to whether should they stay or should they go. Uh, this is an indication that California is going to be investing in green technology, investing in solar, and creating jobs here in our state. Our number one goal this year. Uh, I would strongly urge your I vote. Uh, we will be waiting a long time for the PUC report. Make no doubt about that. Today's the day to vote. Uh, please vote aye. Will the secretary please call the roll? Honested? Aye. Alquist? Aye. Ashburn? No. Calderon? Aye. Cedillo? Cogdill? Aye. Corbett? Correa? Aye. Cox? No. Denham? Aye. Desaunier? Aye. Aye. Duchenne? Dutton? Aye. Flores? Aye. Hancock? Harmon? Aye. Hollingsworth? Huff? Kehoe? Aye. Leno? Aye. Aye. Lou? Lowenthal? Aye. Maldonado? Aye. Negrete McLeod? Oropesa? Aye. Padilla? Pavley? Aye. Price? Romero? Aye. Runner? Aye. Simidian? Aye. Steinberg? Aye. Strickland? Aye. Walters? No. Wiggins? Aye. Wolk? Aye. Wright? No. Wyland? Ye. Ye aye. Cedillo aye. Duchenne aye. Corbett aye. Will the secretary please call the absent members? Hancock? Hollingsworth? Hollingsworth no. Huff? Lou? Negata McLeod? Padilla? Price? Wyland. Mr. President, ayes 27. Ayes 27, noes 5, the measure passes. Thank you, Senator Kehoe. Senator, Senator DeSalonay. Mr. President, I'm rising for file number 37, AB 1585. Secretary, please read file item 37. Assembly Bill 1585 by the Committee on Accountability and Administrative Review, an act relating to state agency reports and declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. Mr. President, that is a mouthful. Uh, 1585 is authored jointly by all 18 members of the Assembly Accountability and Administrative Review Committee. It deletes 1,500 obsolete reports. It's uh, to save the state of California five to eight million dollars. It has had no no votes, and I would ask for an I vote. Members, any debate or discussion on this item? Seeing and hearing none, will the secretary please call the roll? Honested? Aye, Alquist? Aye, Ashburn? Calderon? Aye, Cedillo? Cogdill? Aye, Corbett? Aye, Correa? Aye, Cox? Aye, Denham? Aye, Desaunier? Aye, Duchenne? Aye, Dutton? Aye, Flores? Aye, Hancock? Aye, Harmon? Aye, Hollingsworth? I, Huff, I, Kehoe, I, Leno, I, Lou, Lowenthal, I, Maldonado, I, Negrete McLeod, I, Oropesa, Padilla, I, Pavley, I, Price, Romero, I, Runner, I, Simidian, I, Steinberg, I, Strickland, I, Walters, I Wiggins, I Wolk, I Wright, I Wyland, I Ye, Ye I, Cedillo I. Eyes 35, no zero. The measure passes. Thank you. On the 30, eyes 35 on the urgency. Eyes 35 on the measure. The measure passes. Thank you. Senator Padilla, are you re returning back to motions and resolutions? You're recognized at Senator Steinberg's desk. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members, I do have a sort of a special presentation and thank you uh, to share with all of you today. The man standing to my right is no stranger. 
uh, to the members of the Senate and uh, others throughout the building. Uh, Randy Chen has moved on to uh, greener pastures, if you will, after a 20-year uh, stint in state government that uh, uh, took him from a uh, young analyst at the California Public Utilities Commission to having served as a consultant to both the Assembly, uh, Utilities and Commerce Committee, uh, and finally with the Senate Energy, Utilities and Communications Committee, uh, having served in the capacity of chief consultant uh, for the last several years. Uh, if you can think of the revolutions we've uh, lived through in the last decade, uh, in both the energy arena and the communications arena, uh, Randy's been uh, the steady force guiding the policy and decision making uh, of various chairs uh, and various senators in that time period. So it gives me great pleasure uh, to present this resolution uh, to our Randy Chin, who's uh, now across the street. So you can uh, hug him and congratulate him today, but he can't buy you lunch according to the rules. Uh, but we certainly wish him well in his new endeavor and are pleased that uh, while he may not be with us formally, uh, he hasn't gone too far and we'll be sending, seeing plenty of him uh, this year and in future sessions. Congratulations, Randy, and uh, we'll turn it over to you. Mr. Chan, we're expecting you to say some words. Uh, Mr. President, may I make a comment? Oh, yes, Senator, uh, Senator Kehoe. Thank you. Uh, members, I uh, want to thank Senator Padilla for uh, bringing this resolution forward. I have to say, uh, just very simply, uh, the Senate's loss is, is uh, Edison's gain. Uh, Randy uh, Chin is an outstanding uh, policy uh, advisor when it comes to energy and uh, telecommunications and other uh, utility matters in California. And uh, it was a pleasure working with you. I learned a lot. Congratulations. Mr. Chen. Thank you, Senators. It's a real honor to be here and thank you very much for this. Um, now my wife and kids know what I've been doing for the last 20 years of my life. Um, it's really been an, an, an honor to, to be here, working for yourselves and for your predecessors and your really pushy and aggressive staffs. But it's been a, a great learning experience for me, and I've appreciated it very much. Thank you. Members, we are going to now go to gubernatorial appointments, and Senator Steinberg, you are recognized at your desk. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to take up the item of uh, Senator Abel Maldonado for Lieutenant Governor of the State of California, please. Okay. We can get everyone to Members, sit down. if you could take your seats, members. Hey, Rod. If the members, uh, gonna... members could take their seats, please. Senator Steinberg. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Today we consider the confirmation of our colleague, uh, Senator Abel Maldonado, for the appointed position of Lieutenant Governor of the State of California. Senator Maldonado has been an amiable, 
and hardworking colleague in our house and has been open to the spirit of bipartisan cooperation. Before I say why I support Senator Maldonado and urge you to support Senator Maldonado for the position of Lieutenant Governor, I want to answer a question that has been raised by many about whether or not there is a need to fill the office of Lieutenant Governor during a relatively short period of time. In my view, it is not the privilege of the Senate to determine the value of the position. If they so choose, the people of this state may consider the matter in the future. It is our job to adhere to the Constitution and to perform our task of considering Senator Maldonado's qualifications for this job. This is a responsibility that the Senate takes seriously. We had an extensive hearing last week in the Senate Rules Committee that was not focused on anything but what really matters, and that is Senator Maldonado's views on the present and future challenges facing the state of California. While in the case of a constitutional confirmation, the Assembly plays an equal part as well. The Senate, by tradition and by experience, has a special role in ensuring a thoughtful and dispassionate review. In addition, Senator Maldonado, of course, is our colleague, and thus we know him best in determining his qualifications. It's important to say, as we said in committee, that today's vote, at least for some of us, is not a political endorsement. It is, however, an important acknowledgement of the fact that from my perspective, and I believe the perspective of many of Senator Maldonado's colleagues, an acknowledgement of the fact that Senator Maldonado, in difficult circumstances, has been willing to cross over and to work with the majority party, not just once, but on a number of occasions. And last year, cast a vote that some aspects of, I know even I had problems with, some elements of that, but bottom line, cast a vote to avoid $25 billion of even deeper cuts to vital public investments, including education and higher education. And so I rise as your leader to say that Senator Maldonado is qualified to hold this position, certainly for uh, the, the time period remaining on this term. I urge and I vote. Thank you. Members, any other debate or discussion? Senator Correa. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, Senator Maldonado, we both arrived together here about the same time, more than 10 years ago. And as I reflect over your family history, you continue to remind us that with hard work in this state and in this country, the American dream is still alive. And in those years, I've also come to know you as a good father and as a good husband. But I have to admit, as I look at your voting record, it is a controversial one. Yet your voting record also reflects a very important fact, and that is that you vote looking beyond political ideology and you essentially embrace what is important for all Californians, what is best for all of those who live in the state of California. And of course, in these hard times, you've made the hard choices, you've made those hard votes. And that's why today here, I am supporting a nomination for Lieutenant Governor, 
and I am proudly voting for you for your nomination. Without a doubt, you're qualified, and you have the passion, second to none, to do what's best for all in the state of California. And now, Mr. President, if I can, I'd like to say a few words in Spanish. Como legisladores hoy tenemos una decisión muy importante de confina, confirmar o no confirmar al senador Maldonado. Los dos llegamos juntos aquí hace más de 10 años. El senador, hijo de braceros, hijo de padres humildes. El senador nos ha enseñado que sí se puede. Es decir, que si tenemos las ganas Si trabajamos duro, sí se pueden realizar nuestros sueños en este gran país y en este gran estado. Y como elegido, el senador reconoce que lo que importa, que lo que de veras importa es el pueblo, es decir, todos nosotros que vivimos aquí en el estado de California. Por eso hoy... Con mucho orgullo, por eso hoy, con mucho honor, apoyo a mi colega, al senador Maldonado. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Senator Correa. Senator Alquist, you're recognized at your desk. Thank you very much. Uh, I will be voting for uh, Abel's nomination. And Abel, my friend, the reason I am doing this there would be many reasons, but the main one is that over the many, many years I have known you, and um, you have v voted for our budgets, I think at least five, possibly several more, but at least five in the Senate. The reality is that we need to work in a bipartisan manner. The public deserves it and demands it in both houses of this fine democratic institution ought to vote for your confirmation. Thank you, Senator Alquist. Senator Dutton. I'm, uh, I'm going to rise to uh, support the governor's nomination. Now, it's true I don't see eye to eye with Senator Maldonado on, on a a lot of issues, or some most issues, at least 50 percent. But then, heck, I don't see eye to eye with more the majority of my colleagues here on the floor anyway. So that by itself I isn't uh, isn't the reason uh, to consider for my consideration to uh, vote for him, obviously. But there are issues facing the state right now today that are critical, and they're not really a partisan issue. It's more of an issue of what's good for California immediately, and that is to get somebody that will help actually create jobs today in the private sector. And I have a commitment from Senator uh, Maldonado that he will do that, that that will be his commitment, that he will help to try to get people to work in California and grow our private sector and create the opportunities through our small business community so that people, other people, like himself, can have the same opportunities. So for that, I will be voting aye on this nomination. Okay. Senator Cedillo. Members, I also stand uh, very adamantly, enthusiastically, uh, and proudly uh, to speak in favor of our endorsement and confirmation of Abel Maldonado. Uh, as a member of the Rules Committee, uh, we have a very modest but firm standard for uh, confirming the governor's nominations. The governor is elected by the people of California and there's a time for us to be partisan and it's during those elections and people will know that during those time periods I am very very partisan. But once the governor has been elected he is the governor and he is the governor of all of the people. And so when the governor comes forward he has a not only a right but a duty and an obligation to put forth his own administration. Most likely to reflect his views and his perspectives. He has won the election, the people have spoken. And so as a result, the criteria for confirming a nomination of the governor is a, is a modest one, firm but modest. 
Is the person competent? Does the person comply with the law? It's pretty simple. In some instances, the governor has put forward people who are extraordinarily talented and competent, but failed to recognize their duties or failed to recognize the responsibilities to comply with the law. And in those instances, we have rejected those nominees appropriately. In this instance, that is not the case. There is not a question of whether or not Abel Maldonado is competent. He clearly is. And there's not a question of whether or not Abel Maldonado complies with the law. He does. And so that is very simply in itself sufficient cause for us to confirm him. But there is something more valuable and important about this vote. And it is the question of comedy and the question of this institution. And more particularly, it is important at this moment of term limits. Because we must do all that we can to preserve the rich traditions of this body and of this extraordinary, unique institution and this unique legislature. And so we must take a vote that's not simply to confirm Abel Maldonado, but one that confirms our values and our commitments to work together, to be bipartisan. This is what the people want. It is very evident that our lack of popularity amongst the voters is in part because of our failure to work together. And so we must work together. There is no question, my colleagues have come to me and said, Gil, look at his record and look at all the votes he's taken. And I thought, wow, look at, we voted differently on so many issues. And so what did that tell me? He's a Republican. He sees things differently. His party looks at the same problems that we all look at, but has a different perspective on solving them. And so he's a Republican. We know that. That is not in itself a criteria for us not to vote for him. He has, though, on some occasions taken very courageous votes and has done the things that are important to reach out, to set the example, to show us how we construct a bridge to work together. Voting for a budget under the two-thirds criteria and being part of the minority party and reaching out to confirm an agreement and a compromise is courageous. It is heroic. For Republicans to take that vote, your career is in full jeopardy. Your commitment to public service, your ability to be reelected, to maintain positions of leadership are placed in peril and jeopardy. And so to do so is really a reflection of a very pronounced commitment to comedy. And so we must acknowledge that, nurture it, and support it. I would urge a unanimous confirmation of him, simply for that reason. Now he has taken some votes though that I'm very excited about. Because I know on occasion I bring propositions to you that I believe are really the right thing to do, that are really important for the people of California, that really reflect our shared vision about where this state is going and how we should meet those challenges that confront us. Now I'll grant they're not popular, and they're difficult for my colleagues, even in my own party. So when an Abel Maldonado votes that immigrants who comply with the process should get a driver's license, it's a very courageous vote. When Abel Maldonado has the foresight to work with Marco Fireball and myself to say that students who are residents of California grow up here and go through our schools should be able to go to college and pay the same tuition, that's a very courageous vote. In fact, some of my colleagues in my own party don't take that vote. And so in the interest of comedy and recognizing how important it is that we have people amongst us who are willing to find the middle. I want to urge that we do what the people want us to do, to be nonpartisan and to think only of the interests of this institution and its place and value in our democratic society. I urge an I vote for my colleague Abel Maldonado. Thank you. Senator Lowenthal, you're recognized at your desk. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, and, and I am proud and pleased to stand here 
to support the, nominate, the confirmation of Senator Abel Maldonado for Lieutenant Governor. And I'm also pleased to follow Senator Cedillo's eloquent statements of why we as an institution must confirm Abel Maldonado. So I will be very brief. One is I've known Abel since we both came into the legislature in 1998. We have worked together. I think without a doubt, he's a very, very competent legislator and will be, do us proud as Lieutenant Governor. But more than that, at a time when the legislature really needs courageous members, people who will take a risk, Senator Maldonado has demonstrated that he is willing to take that risk and to listen to both sides of the argument and stand up and do what's right. And finally, at a time when the legislature has an unbelievably low approval rating, where people do not think we can come together to solve California's problems, this will demonstrate that we take a small step to demonstrate that we as a legislature in a bipartisan way can come forward and reaffirm that California can be governed, that we can work together, and I urge my colleagues now with that to send that message out to Californians and to confirm Senator Abel Maldonado for Lieutenant Governor. Senator Romero. Uh, thank you. Um, I also rise in support of the confirmation today. And there's a little bit of an interesting um, um, status going on. I mean, if you look just at this floor, we have three lieutenant governor candidates, and all three of them are quite capable. And that's only in this room, not to mention all the other candidates outside of the chambers today. I want to reaffirm that this is not the election. This is not the ballot box. This is not an endorsement. I've made my endorsement already for Lieutenant Governor in June and November. But this is a confirmation vote. Uh, some people have asked, why don't we just wait? What does Lieutenant Governor do? As stated by Senator Steinberg, the voters have, Lieutenant Governor, if we wish to dismantle and get rid of it, that's a vote of the people. But in looking at the Lieutenant Governor, at least from an education perspective, I see a very needed voice on the UC Board of Regents, on the California State University trustees where we have seen abuse and excesses and the need to have a strong voice to advocate and fight for access and quality for students. And Senator Maldonado, if you are confirmed, I look forward to working with you to ensure that we have a strong voice for students. I recall being on this floor when we had a similar debate years ago. Two of our colleagues at that time Senator Bruce McPherson, Senator Deborah Bowen. And we had to make a choice, a confirmation vote, and on a bipartisan basis with then President Pro Tem John Burton, we confirmed Republican Bruce McPherson, a good member, a fine uh, appointed Secretary of State, Deborah Bowen came in November and defeated him. That confirmation was a confirmation. It was not the election. It was not the endorsement. This Senate, I think, stood true to its legacy and its history. We put politics off the red carpet, and we did our job. And I stand today to ask that we do that job once again. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Democrat from East Los Angeles. I'm a Latina. Some people have asked me, saying, Gloria, you're going to appoint somebody who'll be the highest ranking Latino in state government. My challenge is, let's say the other parties do the same thing. And in a state where the fastest growing segment, quite frankly, are declined to state, that's a message. This is not about elevating a Latino to the highest level of government. This is about going through the confirmation process and allowing a person who was nominated by the governor with the credentials, and we don't always agree on all our votes, as you know, hermanito, as I fondly refer to you as, but this is something where I can stand here and say, you know, good choice, Mr. Governor, for a number of reasons, including political reasons, I understand, but let's get our job done today. I would ask for a, an I vote, put politics aside, let's do our jobs, and let's fight it out in June and November. 
Thank you, Senator Romero. Any other members with comments? Senator Steinberg, we'd like to close on the nomination. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you for the, the civil discourse. I urge an I vote on the nomination of Abel Maldonado as Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Okay. Will the sector please call the roll? Austed? No. Alquist? Aye. Aye. Ashburn? Aye. Aye. Calderon? Cedillo? Aye. Aye. Cogdill? Corbett? Aye. Aye. Correa? Aye. Aye. Cox? Aye. Aye. Denham? No. No. Desaunier? Aye. Aye. DeCheney? No. no. Dutton? Aye. Aye. Flores? Yeah. No. Hancock? Aye. Aye. Harmon? Hollingsworth? Aye. Aye. Huff? Aye. Aye. Kehoe? Aye. Aye. Leno? Aye. Aye. Lou? Aye. Lowenthal? Aye. Aye. Maldonado? Aye. Negretta McLeod? Oropesa? Aye. Aye. Padilla? Aye. Aye. Pavley? Aye. Aye. Price? Aye. Romero? Aye. Aye. Runner? No. no. Simidian? Aye. Aye. Steinberg? Aye. Aye. Strickland? I Walters, I Wiggins, I Wolk, I Wright, I Wyland, no, ye, ye no. Eyes twenty six, no seven. The nomination is passed. Senator Steinberg, you have one more gubernatorial nomination. We have one more. Senator Maldonado, you recognize your desk. Well, uh, Mr. President and members, I wasn't going to say anything, but I think it's appropriate that I say thank you very much for the trust you've put in me. Uh, this is one step to becoming Lieutenant Governor. The other process is to get the support and help from the members of the California State Assembly, where I served for six years. Uh, for those of you who voted for me, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's an honor and I won't let you down, and my door will always be open for every Californian in this great state. Uh, this is not the office for Republicans. It's not the office for Democrats. It's not the office for a political party. This is the office for the people of the great state of California. And I can guarantee you that every day that I work as Lieutenant Governor, if I get confirmed on the other side, it'll be to be working with you, because you're my colleagues, to do three things to create jobs, jobs, and jobs. So with that, Senator Steinberg, thank you so much for the camaraderie. Thank you for the support. Uh, when I first called you, you said, Abel, we're going to give you a fair hearing. Couldn't have asked for anything more. So on behalf of myself, muchas gracias to all of you. And to my colleagues on the Republican side, thank you too. And to the Democrats, thank you too. It's uh, you have no idea how I feel right now. You just don't. Because uh, this country has given my family everything. And this state has given me everything. And I love California. And, um, you know, I heard a lot about 
times are tough and people don't like us. And I agree with that, but things are getting better. And things are getting better. We saw the numbers in December. We saw the numbers that John Chung put out yesterday. Things are getting better. May is going to be a May, a May surprise, not a May revision. And I hope we can all come together to put this state in the right direction and never allow it to get into this place to where people dislike us. So thank you very, very much. And just briefly, uh, Mr. President, my mom and my dad who came up here twice, they've never come up here. They came up here twice this past two weeks to my wife, Laura, and my kids. And last but not least, my staff, who's been working very, very hard uh, on this uh, confirmation process. So thanks for the clap. It was a one-handed clap, because I still had need another clap on the other side uh, to make it work. But uh, I'll never forget the support you've given me. Senator Steinberg, item four, gubernatorial appointments. I have one other uh, nomination. No clapping required on this one. Um, let's file item four. This is the governor's nomination of Del Monte Walters as the director of CAL FIRE, formerly known as the Department of Forestry. Mr. Walters was heard yesterday in the Rules Committee and approved on a five to nothing vote. Uh, qualified and uh, and doing a, a good job. Uh, we are going to refer some questions regarding the department's budget, specifically whether it is getting every dollar of reimbursement from its contracts with cities, counties, and special districts to the budget committee and the appropriate subcommittee to <clears throat> oversee uh, this department. Uh, but this gentleman uh, deserves to be confirmed. I urge an I vote. Will the secretary please call the roll? Honestad? Aye. Aye. Alquist? Aye. Aye. Ashburn? Aye. Aye. Calderon? Aye. Cedillo? Aye. Aye. Cogdell? Aye. Corbett? Aye. Aye. Correa? Aye. Aye. Cox? Aye. Aye. Denham? DeSaunier? Aye. Aye. DeCheney? Dutton? Aye. Aye. Flores? Aye. Hancock? Aye. Aye. Harmon? Aye. Aye. Hollingsworth? Aye. 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 Huff? Aye. Aye. Kehoe? I Leno, I Lou, Lowenthal, I Maldonado, I Negreta McLeod, I Oropesa, I Padilla, I Pavley, I Price, Romero, I Runner, I Semidian, I Steinberg, I Strickland, I Walters, I Wiggins, I Wolk, I Wright. I Wyland, I Ye, Ye I, Duchenne I, I thirty six, no zero. The appointment is confirmed. Members will now recess the regular session and convene the eighth extraordinary session. The prayer and pledge will be deemed complete. Under motions and resolutions, we have two motions. The dais. And members without objection, SB 27, 28, 32, and 34 will be given their second reading upon being reported from the Appropriations Committee. Members without objection, I move that Assembly Bills 1 through 20 in the 8th Extraordinary Session be withdrawn from the Rules Committee and given their second hearing upon being withdrawn and placed on file. And second reading. Members, we will now recess the eighth. Is Senator Cox, would you re uh, would you repeat just that which you would said about uh, withdrawing and and uh, placing on the file again? I, I didn't hear that clearly, sir. Yes, I will read that again, Senator Cox. Without objection, Senate Bill 27, 28, 32, and 34 will be given their second reading upon being reported from the Appropriations Committee. You're welcome. Members, without objection, we will now recess the 8th Extraordinary Session and reconvene the regular session. Is there any further business to come before the Senate? Seeing and hearing none, Senator Steinberg. 
Thank you very yes, much, Mr. President. Uh, I would like to announce a Democratic caucus immediately after uh, adjournment, and then to announce uh, the schedule. Tomorrow there are Senate committees meeting, including the Appropriations Committee and I believe the Energy Committee, to take up uh, some special session jobs-related bills. But, for, but there won't be a need for a full uh, on floor session, so we'll, we'll consider Friday a check-in session. Tuesday we'll reconvene at two o'clock. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday will be upon the call of the pro tem. I do anticipate that next week we will be on the floor considering midterm budget action. And we'll, we'll give more detail uh, as soon as we can. All right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Steinberg. Members, the Senate will be in recess until 3.30 at which, Senator Wolk, I'm sorry, you're recognized at your desk. Yes, after session there will be a meeting of, uh, a hearing of Rev. Tax, 3191 after session. Rev. Tax Committee will be- And after caucus. After caucus in room 3191. Senator DeCheney. Budget Committee will meet upon adjournment of the Democratic Caucus in 4203. Thank you, Senator DeCheney. Members, any more announcements? Seeing hearing none, the Senate will be in recess until 3.30, at which time the adjournment motion will be made. We will reconvene Tuesday at 2 p.m. The Senate stands in recess. The Senate stands in recess.